Deaf People in Ancient Ireland We can gather evidence of what people's lives were like in ancient Ireland through analysing the archaeological record found at passage tombs, cranogues, ring forts and other such sites. Ireland contains a plethora of archaeological finds. However, when it comes to deaf people in particular, and their lives back then, we can only extrapolate from what the early Irish law tracks tell us. We know that there were 27 different social classes in early Ireland. And one of them was the Brehens. Breton is the Irish word for judge. This learned class transcended all political boundaries. Therefore, what is termed early Irish law was national in scope, covering the entire island of Ireland. Unlike our modern times, the legal class did not work in any well-defined place. They wandered around instead, dispensing justice if and when it was needed, catering to the people in villages and settlements. For centuries, the law evolved according to the organic development of Irish society and culture. When Christianity was introduced to Ireland, this period also brought the first opportunity for the Breton Laws to be recorded. Monks began writing down the laws from the 6th century onwards, along with their illuminated manuscripts of the Bible. It is thanks to these monks that we have a written record of the early Irish laws, and by extension, an understanding of what life was like for the people who would have had to live by their edicts. When the Vikings arrived in the 8th century, the laws became fossilised as Irish society underwent a fundamental change. Further change would come with the arrival of the Anglo-Normans. Regardless, the early Irish legal system operated in Ireland until the early part of the 17th century. The time when Queen Elizabeth I imposed English common law in Ireland. As a result of this violent sea change, any writings found covering ancient Irish law were destroyed by the English. Many Irish people hid their ancient manuscripts in bogs or in various other places. For many centuries, these manuscripts were feared lost forever. Thankfully, a large number have been found again. It is thanks to these extant writings that we are able to develop our understanding of ancient Ireland. The first of these then, kingship. In order to be a king, one had to be a male member of the correct social class. And one had to be elected by his peers. 
the criteria were strict. The candidate had to be male, educated, adult and without blemish or disability. Automatically, then, even if a deaf man was the firstborn son of a king, it would not matter. His deafness would preclude him from being a candidate to rule in the first place. Clearly not to be kings then, yet it remains unclear where exactly deaf people would fit into society. It would seem that the closest approximation would be of physical disability and of unsound mind in the sense of being confused. Mer. If this was the case, then the deaf person would not be seen as responsible for his or her own actions. But a guardian, con, would be responsible for them. With the exception of offences committed in an alehouse. But this only if the deaf man was harmless. As well as these responsibilities and obligations, the rights of the deaf person had to take precedence over other rights. Early Irish law is not only concerned to protect society from the insane. A fragmentary text called Dubrahav Gara deals with the kin's obligation to care for its family members who are insane, aged or suffering from physical disabilities. Similarly, the text on distraint allows a day's grace if a defendant is looking after a dr or mer and observes the rights of the insane takes precedence over other rights. If a deaf woman became pregnant, she had no legal rights to bring up the child. According to the following section. Physical disabilities may also limit a person's legal capacity or responsibility. In ancient Ireland, a woman who is sick, blind, deaf, leprous or maimed in her hand is not responsible for rearing her child. A person who cannot speak cannot be subjected to distraint. Instead, the plaintiff must proceed against that person's guardian. People were not allowed to mock or jeer a deaf person, and if they did so, they were heavily fined. Each person had an honour price. and fines were set according to the honour price of the person who was mocked. According to commentary, a heavy fine is levied on anyone who mocks the disability of an epileptic, a leper, a lame man, a blind man or a deaf man. Fines were paid in cattle. The higher the honour price, the higher the fine, and thus more cattle had to be given. So let us look at a hypothetical man and woman. Both are deaf and living in ancient Ireland. Let's for convenience sake say that both are in the same social class 
The man is the son of a king, but he is not even in the running for the vacancy of kingship after the death of his father. He is in love with the deaf woman and they have a child. Though, because the mother is deaf, she is not responsible for rearing that child. Their families must take on the responsibility. If someone mocks the deaf woman, perhaps unaware of her family's higher social status, then the mocker will be heavily fined for his transgression. Such is just one of many possible scenarios given the laws.